Good morning. I'm Chief Brian McFadden of the County Jerry Police Department, and I am here to read to Chapter 1 of Mr. Popper's Penguins to you today. Chapter 1, Stillwater. It was an afternoon in late September in the pleasant little st city of Stillwater. Mr. Popper, the house painter, was going home from work. He was carrying his buckets, his ladders, and his boards so that he had a rather hard time moving along. He was splattered here and there with paint and calcimine, and there were bits of wallpaper clinging to his hair and whiskers, for he was a rather untidy man. Picture. The children looked up from their play to smile at him as he passed, and the housewife seeing him said, oh dear, there goes Mr. Popper. I must remember to ask John to have the house painted over in the spring. No one knew what went on inside Mr. Popper's head, and no one guessed that he would one day be the most famous person in Stillwater. He was a dreamer. Even when he was busiest smoothing down the paste on the wallpaper and paint, or painting the outside of someone's house, he would forget what he was doing. Once he painted the, the three sides of the kitchen green and the other side yellow. The housewife, instead of being angry and making him do it over, had liked it so well she'd made him leave it that way. And all the other housewives, when they saw it, admired it too. So pretty soon, everybody in Stillwater had two color kitchens. The reason Mr. Popper was so absent-minded is that he was always dreaming about faraway countries. He had never been out of Stillwater. Not that he was unhappy. He had a nice little house of his own and a, a wife who he loved dearly and his two children named Jamie and Bill. Still, it would have been nice if he had he often thought if he could have seen something of the world before he met Mrs. Popper and settled down. He had never hunted tigers in India or climbed the peaks of the Himalayas or dived for pearls in the South Seas. Above all, he'd never seen the poles. That was what he regretted most of all. He'd never seen the great white shining expanses of ice and snow. How he wished he had been a scientist instead of a house painter in Stillwater so that he could have joined some of the great polar expeditions since he could not go, he was always thinking about them. Whenever he heard that a polar movie was in town, he was the first to the ticket window. He often sat through three shows. Whenever the town library got a new book about the Arctic or Antarctic, the North Pole or the South Pole, Mr. Popper was the first to borrow it. Indeed, he had read so much about the polar explorers, he could name all of them and tell you what they had done. He was quite an authority on the subject. His evenings were the best time of all. Then he would sit in his little house and he would read about those cold regions on the top and the bottom of the earth. As he read, he would get a little globe out that Jamie and Bill had given him for Christmas, the Christmas before and scratch out the exact spot he was reading about. So now, as he made his way through the streets, he was happy because the day was over and because it was the end of September. When he came to the gate of a little neat bungalow, at 432 Proudfoot Avenue, he turned in. Well, my love, he said, setting down his buckets, ladders, and boards, and kissing Mrs. Popper, the decorating season is over, and I've painted all the kitchens in Stillwater, and I've papered all the rooms to the new apartments in, on Elm Street. There's no more work until spring, and the people will want their houses, when the people will want their houses painted. Mrs. Popper sighed. Sometimes I wish you had the kind of work that lasted all year instead of the from spring to fall, she said, it will be very nice to have you at home for a vacation, of course, but it is a little hard to sweep around a man sitting, reading all day. I could decorate the house. No, indeed, he said Mrs. Popper firmly. Last year, you painted the bathroom three different times because you had nothing else to do, and I think that is enough of that, but what worries me is the money. I have saved a little, and I dare say we can get along as we have other winters. No more roast beef, no more ice cream, not even on Sundays. Shall we have beans every day, Sid? asked Jamie and Bill, coming in from play. I'm afraid so, said Mrs. Popper. Anyway, go wash your hands for, for supper and Papa, put away your litter of paints because you won't be needing them for quite a while. And that's the end. Start page chapter two.